Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's Rev. Wendy here with the Community of Compassion and my weekly spirit talk. Hello, YouTube family and those who are joining from wherever you are joining. It's always a pleasure to be with you every Sunday to provide a, a spirit talk, sort of inspiration and motivation to get us from week to week. Uh, and here we are already in mid-July. I, I'm not sure if anybody else feels like time is moving at warp speed, but I just, I thought it was just like the 4th of July. Um, you know, well, I guess that was kind of last week, but it still doesn't seem like we're already at like the 13th. And I'll tell you what, I, um, I think that some of my neighbors have forgotten that 4th of July was last week because I'm still hearing fireworks. I think I've been hearing fireworks since around May and not just fireworks, but some of them feel a lot like small bombs detonating. I, I don't know if you all have had that experience where you are, but uh, fireworks seem to have certainly improved over the, uh, over the years because uh, I might be telling my age, but all we really had were the, you know, the sparkly things, the sparklers and, maybe the small ones, and then we would go down to the local stadium for the big stuff. So yeah, uh, I am uh, happy that we're moving beyond <laughs> the, the celebration of fireworks. But anyway, thank you so much for being here this morning. It is Spirit Talk Sunday. Hi, Bill Hodder. I see you, my friend. Good morning to you out there in California. I um, uh, Today's Spirit Talk is entitled Lead with Love lead with love. And anybody who knows me knows that uh, love is, you know, it's in my DNA. It, it just is, is who I am. It is what I seek to cultivate in my life and certainly seek to express to others. Um, it's, it's, it's this place of unconditional acceptance of others, unconditional acceptance of myself, and just a way of looking at the world that I believe provides an opportunity for, for much more commonality among us and much more um, ability to get along with one another because we do have more in common than we have differently. And when you love someone, you're uh, willing um, to appreciate those differences, not feel threatened by them. So today I wanted to talk about leading with love. And to be honest with you, what, what really has um, you know, led me to this particular topic was a sort of a reflection I've been doing for myself, but also just looking around our nation, friends. And again, you know, I don't like to necessarily get political, but at the same time, I'm looking at all the, uh, you know, the calamity and the harshness uh, in discourse and in and, and rhetoric that not, not only is happening at the top, but is spilling down into us. You know, all of the, the fighting, um, you know, in, in grocery stores about whether or not, you know, you're going to put a mask on or not. And, and, you know, just tensions being flared and, and, and escalating. And, and it to me is a country that really is crying out for, for leadership and for a return to love. And it made me start to think about this week, what would it be like? What would our situation be like that we're currently experiencing if our, our those in authority and leadership led from a place of love? If they started from a place of love for their fellow man, their fellow human being, you know, love for each other and said that at the end of the day, whatever we do and however we do it, we want it to reflect the love that we have and the love that we would like to demonstrate and express to others. Do you think that would have much of a difference on, on some of the outcomes that we're seeing? I do. And I don't think that it's too utopic or pie in the sky to say that because I am not suggesting the type of love that says, you know, let's all just get along and kumbaya and, and act as if everything is fine. That is not the love I'm talking about. And I'll get into that into my talk today. But I just really feel like that there's a missed opportunity happening in our world because the, the model that is being set before us is not helping to reinforce, in my opinion, the opportunity for us to lead and to engage 
in love. And so today I just want to spend a few minutes talking with you a little bit about lead with love. You know, Martin Luther King, who I consider like a spiritual father, I, I posted something last week about Maya Angelou is like a spirit mother to me, just someone that I really resonate with. So if Maya Angelou is my spirit mother, Dr. King is certainly, um, you know, a spirit father to me. And, um, you know, much of what he says and much of what he did was someone was who was leading from a place of love. He genuinely loved this country. He genuinely loved other people. He wasn't perfect, but he was someone who had determined that leading from a place of love would bring us together more quickly than one that was not leading from that place. He had said in one of his quotes, I've decided to go with love because hate is a too great a burden to bear. Too great a burden to bear. I've decided to go with love. And I appreciate that quote. I really like it because it reinforces with me that we have a choice on how we lead. We have a choice on how we interact. We can choose to work you know, out of love we, or we can choose to work from a place of, of hate. But I do wanna make one clarification before I get into to the, the essence of my talk today, which will be four steps and four ways that we can take to lead with love. I wanna say this. Um, when Martin Luther King says, you know, love, he's choosing love because hate is too great a burden. I do want to clarify something in that love and hate are not opposites, if you will. Hate is not the opposite of love. The reason I say that is because both of them require an emotional investment in the person or thing that you're hating. The opposite of love is indifference. Indifference says, I don't care about anything that happens to anyone other than myself or those that I care about or those that are important to me. Indifference says, I don't care if you live or die. So we need to be careful when we're making the distinction that somehow loving someone, the opposite of loving someone is hating them. No, because guess what? you still have an emotional investment in that person. It takes emotion to hate. And sometimes that emotion can be just as strong as, as one to love. So when we're looking at that, leading with love is not being not hateful. It's not being indifferent. Leading with love is not able to look at somebody and say, I don't care whether or not you live or die. I don't care if you go hungry or if you starve. Leading with love says, I see you, I care about you, I care about what happens to you, and, and as a result, the actions that I take are going to be from that place. That's what leading with love is about, and that, I feel like, is, is a goal, a goal for anyone who wants to be in leadership, whether it's in national, local, state, or even in our own lives, if we endeavor to lead from that place, it can be a much more peaceful and workable existence. Um, you know, I think some of this I posted earlier on uh, on my Twitter and and on my uh, on my Facebook an article from ABC News that has a list of the names, not all of them, and the faces of the over 130,000 people that we have lost during this coronavirus. 130,000 people have died from COVID-19 or complications related thereto in a little under six months. And that is a lot. And, you know, while it's not fair to to Monday morning quarterback, and I'm certainly not trying to do that, or in this case, Sunday morning quarterback. But it did make me wonder, if I'm honest, it did make me wonder about how the leadership vacuum that we appear to have in this country, particularly around this pandemic, if it had been one rooted in love, would we have a different outcome at this point? I personally think that 
that we would. Could could more people have been saved? Could some of those deaths be avoided? I clicked on the article and I started to look and they had not only I said like the names, but they had the faces and I I had to click out. I'm just going to be honest. After about the sixth, the sixth face, I, I had to I had to click out because it was it was it was overwhelming. I, it, the the very first story was actually a young man who died uh, a couple of days ago. It looks like you know early July because deaths are still happening. And he was 22, and he was a special needs student. And, you know, lit up the room and loved, you know, everyone who you know came into contact with him, loved him. And and he's gone now. And, you know, it was it was a lot to take in. And while I'm not pinning any blame on anyone in particular, what I am suggesting is that those folks whose lives have been lost during this pandemic, they mattered. Those folks may or may not have been expecting that this would be their last year on earth. And in my opinion, those folks, all of us, but mainly those folks deserved to have a leadership that valued them and saw them for the life that they were and made decisions from a place of honoring that. And so that's what I mean, leading with love, takes those things into consideration. Now, there are lots of scripture, certainly that talk about love and um, I won't go into all of those. There's one you know, sort of popular one I, that says, you know, love is patient and love is kind. Love never, you know, takes into account a suffered wrong. Um, love believes all things, you know, heals all things. Love, you know, is forever. I and and I I'm I'm paraphrasing. That's in First Corinthians 13. If you want to look it up, um, but sometimes scriptures like that can give this sort of idealized, um, you know, sanitized view of love that sometimes, in my opinion, can be very unrealistic. And I say that as a religious leader, I have no problem with. Um, critiquing uh, places in scripture that aren't necessarily compatible with our lived experience. Part of why I preach is to reconcile those two. And so when you hear scriptures like that, love is patient and love is kind and it, it never, you know, it never considers a suffered wrong. It's like, yeah, that's a little bit harder to live out, you know, in this human experience, but I get the spirit of it. And a lot of the Bible and a lot of, you know, scripture is, is much more metaphorical than it is literal. But that's a whole nother talk. Uh, anyway, you know, when you hear people speak about love, uh, they, you know, think about it in these sort of romanticized kinds of, of ideas. And that's not necessarily the only way in which love is demonstrated or expressed. And so today I just want to leave you with a few steps that I believe can also be included in a definition of love, particularly a leadership style that is, is engulfed in a love that says, I want to be the person, I want to be the type of person from which decisions that I make take into the consideration the whole of myself, the whole of humanity, and that, that, that gear toward the outcome that I'm um, in, in search of. And so let me, uh, let me say this, excuse me, while I go through my notes. <laughs> there are four steps that I have listed here that I believe uh, encompass a leadership style or leading with love. And the very first one I want to say is this, love is accountability. Love is not just again, pretending like everything is fine or everything is going to be fine. Love is, is leading you know, with accountability, saying I am accountable for what's happening with me. I'm accountable for the choices and the decisions I'm making. And also I am open to other people who love me, 
holding me accountable to the things that I say that I'm going to do or the things that I say that I believe or that I'm striving for. That is leading with love. You don't just put things out there. It's not just about talking the talk. It's actually about walking the walk. And so those who lead with love lead from a sense and a place of being open to accountability from others, but also for holding themselves accountable. Love is accountable. Love isn't just out there doing its own thing without regard to how it's impacting other people, how it's influencing other people, or how it is um, not leading you to the outcome that you're looking for. So I hope this is making sense. Love, the first step in a leadership style of love is accountability. Are you holding yourself accountable in your own affairs? Because if you are, then... That's, that's, that's loving yourself. And, if, and when you love yourself on that level and you hold yourself accountable, then you can in turn do that for others and with others and allow that to happen in your own life. So leading with love is leading with accountability. The second one, and I'll take this actually from Cornell West, Dr. Cornell West, uh, love is justice. If you are not interested in justice, I need you to help me understand what style of love you're operating from. Cornel West said, never forget that justice is what love looks like in public. So what does that look like for you in public? Love is standing up. Love is speaking out when it's not popular, St standing up for what you believe is right, saying the things and being the things that you believe demonstrate a, a, a more just approach and a more just world. When you lead with love, there ought to be justice on the menu. It ought to be a part of the platform because love is accountability, but love is also justice. And if you're simply putting forward ideas and, and goals that are going to support nothing but yourself or, or, or support injustice, I, it makes me wonder, not judge, not question, but wonder from where your um, definition then of love is being informed. Because love certainly includes justice. So love is accountability. Love is justice. And love is courageous. The third step, love is courageous. Leading with love is very courageous. It takes a lot of courage to stand up, to say things, to put your life on the line. I, I applaud uh, folks who stand up and, and say, you know, what they believe is, is the right thing or call things out. Love, as I said, with accountability, it makes me think of, of our, our frontline heroes who are in the hospitals right now as we go through this COVID-19 um, sort of respike. It's not really even a respike because we didn't get out of the first wave. It's just hitting some of the other states now um, down south. And those of us who were up east have already dealt with it. But you see some of the frontline workers, the doctors, the nurses, and they're getting out there and they're saying, we need this. We need more masks. We need support. The, you know, this needs to be done. You know, standing out there, speaking up because they love what they do. They love and they want to take care of their patients. And they're not afraid to say, we're not getting the support that we need. That takes courage. That's, that's the kind of love that takes courage. Um, you know, all of the Black Lives Matter protests that were happening. Uh, you know, I saw a, a one young, young lady posted that she saw a young black man getting pulled over and uh, she was driving by and he was getting pulled over and he, uh, you know, she kind of stuck her head out the window, asked him, was he okay? And he said, yes, he was, but she felt inclined to stop and just wait for a minute just to see how the interaction went. And, um, and the police officer, one of them on the scene, she said, you know, instructed her that they had arrived, you know, you can go now. Um, you know, we've, We've arrived, we'll take care of it. And she said, respectfully, um, officer, I'm not moving until I make sure this is okay and everything is safe. Now, I'm not judging whether that is right or wrong, but what I am suggesting that there's only a place of love that you must be operating in, that you chose to stay there to see and make sure that one of your fellow human beings was going to be safe. That to me is leading and leading with love. That is allyship. 
And that is the kind of, of courage that I'm talking about if you are going to be one who leads from that place. And finally, love is action. And, and those are kind of synonymous because being courageous enough um, makes you feel comfortable enough to take an action, kind of like that young lady did. It was courageous for her to stop. It was courage for her to stop and, and, and question and see what was going on, make sure everything was okay. It was, it was an act of love for her to remain in place um, you know, and potentially putting herself in whatever dangers that might have occurred, you know, in order to be there for somebody else. So love is also action. It's not just talking about it, being about it. anybody who's in a, a loving relationship knows that love is, is action. It's not just words. You can tell someone I love you all day long, but if you are not doing the corresponding action to that love, your, your, your words are probably falling on deaf ears. And so I think that we understand that too, if you say you love something, someone, some cause, some, some event, some group of people, if you love yourself, then the actions that you are taking are reflective of that, that, that no one would need to even really ask you from where you are operating, where is that place? Because it is demonstrated in the way and in the actions that you are taking. And so when I talk about leading with love, it's not just this grab hands, kumbaya, everything's gonna be fine, we are the world. There is a place for that love, but there's also a place for a love that takes root in you and and gives you the feeling and the sense of responsibility for your fellow man and your fellow woman and your fellow human being. Love is courageous. Love is action. Love is justice. Love is accountability. Take these steps today, if you would, and just reflect on them a little bit. See where they're playing out in your own life. Help me as I pray and continue to pray for these precepts to be adopted in some of our leadership in this country. We are we are still not all the way out of the woods, folks, and um, and no one really has an answer uh, as to when that's going to happen. So we are going to have to be patient. We're going to have to do what we can to support each other uh, during this time. Uh, as well as, you know, to support those that maybe we don't know. And, and wherever you are in community, wherever you are in fellowship, offer yourself. That's what love does. Love is an action. Offer yourself to, to, to stand in the gap for someone, to be their support system when, when they can't be that, because that's really the only way we're going to get ourselves together. Would you pray with me in this moment? Gracious God, loving spirit, source of all that is, we are beings that have been created. We were created in love and we were created to love. God, please help us to tap into those reserves. We may be on our reserves in this moment because we're being pulled and we're being stretched and we're being tested in ways that we never imagined in our own lives. And God, I just ask that in this testing, phase, um, that we develop and cultivate more love energy that we can then share and express to ourselves and to our fellow human beings. It's about to get tougher. God, the pandemic is, 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 is not subsiding. Uh, the unemployment benefits are coming to an end this month. Um, eviction moratoriums are being lifted. We have yet to see the fallout uh, economically from what's happening. It's not going to be easy. So God, we just ask for your mercy. We ask for your divine intervention. We ask for your grace and we ask for your support. We will do what we can. We'll do our, do our part to lead in love. We just ask that you lead and guide us so that we know that even in the midst of everything that's happening, we are not alone. We thank you and we give you praise. In all of your holy names we pray, amen. Thank you everyone. I hope that this was helpful to you. Please do share it. Please do um, 
post it. Uh, I appreciate you again so much for tuning in every week. I, I look forward to these teachings and uh, I will see you again next Sunday. Have a wonderful week. God bless you. Bye-bye.